OK, any questions about this? OK, so now I'm going to finally kind of come to some examples based on this. So let's think of, uh, for now, Q being 2. OK, or maybe our favorite situation, we're thinking about um, binary codes where the, the symbols are just 0 and 1. And let's say we're trying to find a code word, or sorry, a code, a linear code that has high rates, so like lots and lots of um, strings in it, uh, that has some decent minimum distance. OK, and we're going to think about this characterization of the minimum distance of the code. Uh, all right, so as long as H doesn't have a column which is all zeros, then the minimum number of linearly, you know, the minimum size of a linearly dependent set of columns is bigger than one. Okay, if you have a column of all zeros, then that single column by itself is linearly dependent. Okay, but as long as you don't have a column of all zeros, this minimum number is going to be at least two. Uh, what's the simple condition that ensures that this minimum number of columns is at least three? What should it mean about a matrix H over the field of size two, uh, such that it doesn't have any linearly de dependent set of columns of size two? Yeah? Right. Mod 2, or in the field of size 2, two vectors are linearly dependent if and only if they're the same vector. Um, OK, so as long as we take any matrix H that doesn't have the all zeros column and doesn't have two columns that are the same, then the smallest size of a linear dependent set of columns is 3. So we'll have a code of minimum distance at least 3 which is sort of like the first minimum distance that's like good for something. Because as we saw before when we were fixing this uh, thing about the distance, like in this case, you'll be able to decode from one corruption. As long as we have such a matrix, then um, OK, we'll have minimum distance at least three. And if we want a um, code that has lots of code words in it, that has a very high rate, do we want H to be like a tall and thin matrix or a fat and wide matrix? Short and fat? We want it to be short and fat, right? So I mean, OK, it's width, if we're going to have like block length n, then its width is going to be n. But if we want k as large as possible, then we want this matrix to be as short as possible. OK, in other words, we want you know, the matrix to be as wide as possible. So we're trying to come up with like a bunch of columns. No two of them are the same. And we kind of want as many of them as possible if we're trying to get high rate. So one thing we could do is just literally put in every possible distinct column, except for the all zeros column. And this will give us an interesting code. So in fact, this code, when we do this idea, is called the Hamming code. And one way to define it is not by its, uh, saying what its generating matrix is, generator matrix is, but to say what its uh, parity check matrix is. So it's defined by having a parity check matrix H, which is just literally all uh, whose columns are all possible strings of some fixed length. I'll call this length R. 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, all possible columns except for the uh, all zeros column. Okay, so if I fix the height to be R, then of course the uh, width is. 2 to the r minus 1. And this will be our n. OK, so uh, the k, since this height is n minus k, it means the k is 2 to the r minus 1 minus r. OK, so this is uh, uh, 2 to the r, 2 to the r minus r minus 1. And I'll say something about the D in a second, code uh, over the field of size 2. And what is this? Yeah? Why uh, is Because here I've put like, oh, I should not have this one. This should end in a 1. 
Uh, I'm putting all possible binary strings of length r except for the all zero string. Sorry about that. Uh, good. So as I said before, by this characterization, since this has no all zeros column and it has no two columns the same, the size of the smallest linear dependent set of columns is at least three. You can actually easily see that it's exactly three. And uh, therefore, this distance is three. OK. Great. This should say code at the end. OK, and if you like to think about it this way, this is n. And this k is basically n minus log n. It's pretty much n minus log of n plus 1. And um, this is sort of a nice code in some senses. So one nice thing about it is its rate is great. I mean, k is very close to n. If you're trying to uh, encode a binary string of length k, you know, the number of additional symbols you add is basically like a log k, okay, which is very small. Uh, the fact that the minimum distance is 3, it's not awesome, but it's better than nothing. As we saw before, this implies that you can, uh, at least in principle, always correct up to 1. That's a 3 minus 1 over 2 floor, I guess. Uh, corruption or error. And actually, uh, there's something like a little bit extra cute about the Hamming code in terms of its error correction abilities. Let's imagine that you indeed have um, a received word that got that experienced exactly one corruption. Okay, so let's imagine if Y really is a code word. Uh, well, one thing we know is that h times y is the all zeros vector. But imagine h is corrupted in one place. I'll write y plus e, time, e sub i. So this is the, the vector that just has a 1 in the ith position. OK, so this really means that like, the ith bit was flipped. Now let's look what happens if we take, think of this as our received word, y plus e i, and we just multiply it by the parity check matrix, h, this matrix over here. Well, we have hy plus hei. This is 0, because y is a code word. And what happens if we multiply this h by uh, ei on the right? It just picks out the ith column of h. And what is the ith column of h? It's actually the number i written in base 2. So it's um, i in base 2. So this is actually quite slick. If you know that your received word is guaranteed to receive uh, up to one bit flip, either zero bit flips or one bit flip, you take your received word z and uh, multiply it by the parity check matrix. If you get the all zero string, then you're like, great, this was an uncorrupted code word. Otherwise, you get like a binary string that tells you exactly where the bit flip occurred. OK, and then you can decode by just flipping that bit back. OK, so that's uh, cute. Um, Another cute thing about this uh, code, the Hamming code, is it's what's called the perfect code. It's basically uh, there are not too many perfect code families. What this means is, um, you know, we know here that the minimum distance is three, and therefore, if you put like a Hamming ball of radius uh, one around each code word, then they'll all be disjoint. But the phrase perfect code refers to the fact that not only are they disjoint, they exactly partition all of space. OK, so like every single um, string is either a code word or is a distance one from a unique code word. So in some sense, it's um, optimally packing code words into your space um, if you want this minimum distance to be three. OK, so this is like the optimal rate for a distance three code. OK, so uh, that's a cool code, the Hamming code. It's got amazing rate, but really it has terrible distance in some sense because it only lets you correct one error. Its minimum distance is three. So let's now uh, see an example of a code with just the opposite properties, like amazing distance and terrible rate. 
And then uh, eventually we'll see some codes where both properties are good. So uh, the dual of the Hamming code that we just saw is sort of by definition the one that has this H as its generator matrix. That's this H from the previous board as the generator matrix. OK, and what that means is to encode a string x, you know, you multiply it by this matrix. called H. Um, OK, so you see this is actually going to have quite bad uh, rate, a lot of redundancy, because this is like a length R vector. And it's getting multiplied by this uh, matrix that has almost 2 to the R columns. In fact, uh, for technical simplicity, let's actually do something a little bit dumb. Let's insert the all zeros column in here. Okay, you wouldn't actually do this in practice. It's stupid. I mean, it uh, means that every code word will start with zero, which is pointless. There's no point in having every code word start with zero. You may as well just uh, delete that symbol. But it'll just make things like a little bit um, technically nicer if we do this, and ultimately not a very big uh, deal. Uh, okay, so with this like tiny little modification, uh, we get a code called uh, the Hadamard code. OK, so except for this like very minor uh, fill-up of adding this column of zeros here, the dual of the Hamming code is called the Hadamard code. And what is the encoding map for the Hadamard code? Well, in some sense, it's right here. But let's think about it um, in a slightly different way. The encoding map takes x, and it outputs x dot a for all strings uh, A. Right, so you take X and then you literally, you know, dot product it with all possible binary strings of length R, which we're calling A here, and you output those two to the R dot products. Okay, and that's the uh, Hamming code. Sorry, Hadamard code. Okay, so it's uh, definitely, as I said, going to have terrible um, rate, because it stretches a string of length r to a str length, string of length 2 to the r. But it's going to actually have excellent uh, minimum distance. Uh, let's also just rewrite this in uh, another equivalent way. For a string x of length uh, r, let's define Lx to be a linear transformation of being r bit strings into uh, a single bit, basically by this dot product. So Lx is going to map uh, a string a to x1 a1 plus dot 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 plus x r a r. Okay, this is all mod two, and this is a uh, linear polynomial. Over F2. Okay, so this is where we're first going to connect ourselves with the topic from last time, uh, polynomials. By linear, I mean degree one here. And it's very uh, funny and stressful because um, the coefficients are called x and the variables are called a. Okay, so here. I know it's terrible, but like the x's are the coefficients. I mean, for a given fixed x, L of x is a polynomial in the a's. It's a linear polynomial in the a's. The x's are the coefficients, and the a's are the variables or determinant, indeterminants. I know it's kind of confusing, but that's uh, the way it goes. And so another way to think of uh, the encoding map for the Hadamard code is just that x maps to like sort of the truth table or the set of all possible evaluations of this degree one polynomial L of x. Okay, given x, 
L of x is the degree one polynomial whose coefficients are the bits of x. And the Hadamard code encodes x by just listing out all of x's values in the natural order over all possible um, vectors a. It's an n variant, or r variant polynomial. Any questions about this? OK. Great. OK, so let's see the properties of this code. OK, so, um, so Hadamard is an uh, 2 to the r, r. And now I'll tell you the distance. It's 2 to the r minus 1, sub 2 code. OK, so like n equals, sorry, my r's kind of look like n's, 2 to the r. K equals R, and the distance is like n over 2. OK, so that's great. The minimum distance is like half of all the bits. And I'll just say three proofs of this fact, that the minimum distance is n over 2. So uh, the first proof, I'll, well, I'll say all the proofs just in words. So actually, um, a reason that this is called the Hadamard code is if you just list all the code words, not the generator matrix, but you literally write down all code words in a row, there's a 2 to the r of them, and they're all of length 2 to the r. So you get like uh, a list of n vectors of length n. And the matrix that you thereby get is exactly the Hadamard matrix that we studied in the you know, analysis of Boolean functions lecture. Or rather, it'd be exactly the Hadamard matrix if you use plus or minus 1 for the bits instead of 0 or 1. OK, and that's actually a function of um, this definition. Basically, the rows and columns are indexed by binary vectors. And like the entry is basically the dot product between the row and the column index. Uh, but with plus or minus 1 notation. And therefore, uh, if you think about this matrix with plus or minus 1s in it, that's like just a list of all the code words. Uh, to say that um, the minimum distance is uh, n over 2, uh, and in fact, I should add that not only is the minimum distance over n over 2, all pairs of code words are a distance exactly n over 2. So to say that all pairs of code words are a distance exactly n over 2 is to say that in this matrix, n by n matrix, like all strings agree in exactly half the places and disagree in half the places which in plus or minus one notation is like saying um, their dot product over the reals is 0. Because when they're the same, you count plus 1. And when they're different, you count minus 1. So uh, one way to show that all pairs of code words are at distance n over 2 is to recall the fact that the Hadamard matrix h sub 2 to the r is uh, unitary, or its columns are orthogonal. Uh, a different way to prove it is with, if you recall from last time, the schwartz zippel lemma. So last time we talked about the schwartz zippel lemma says that if you have um, two, oh, you have a non-zero polynomial of degree uh, d over f2, then the fraction of inputs that make it up with zero is uh, so the fraction of inputs that make it out non output non-zero is at least 2 to the minus d. So in our scenario, if we have two distinct code words, they generate or they're associated to two distinct linear polynomials. And so the difference of these two linear polynomials is another linear polynomial. And assuming the two x's or the two strings are different, this is a non-zero linear polynomial. And uh, so it has degree 1. So Schwartz-Zippel implies that for a random input, this difference polynomial outputs a non-zero value at least half the time. And that's the same as to say that uh, at least half the symbols are non-zero. And um, 
Yeah, finally, you can just think about this uh, schwartz civil proof in like a simple way. I mean, if this distant difference polynomial looks like x1 a1 plus dot 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 plus x r a r, and the coefficients x1 through xr are not all 0, then in particular, there's at least some xi which is not 0. OK, and if now you pick the a's at random, which is like picking a random position in the code word. Um, pick all the non-AIs at random. They'll give you some value. Xi is 1 by virtue of not being 0. OK, and then you have a 50-50 chance that AI changes the final answer to 1 or 0. OK, so uh, okay, maybe we didn't need three proofs of the same facts, but uh, this is the justification for why the minimum distance, and in fact, every intra-code uh, word distance, is exactly uh, n over 2. In fact, there's a generalization of this Hanovard code, which you can think about as an exercise, to uh, larger field sizes. And it gives you a code uh, where n is q to the r, k is still r, and the minimum distance is even better. It's 1 minus 1 over q times n. OK, the rate is still terrible because you're mapping a string of length r to a string that's exponentially longer. But the rate approaches 1 as q gets bigger.